the middle of the night I'm praying for assurance everything's gonna be all right and Lord I see another battle and it's out in front of me I'm afraid I He said, Woo. do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you at just how far you come. Oh, and every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see? She's talking to her father in a house that was once to home. She said, my bills are coming due, Lord, and six days is not that long. Then she hears a voice so soft and low. He says, I've moved like that before. I'll do this little thing, and I'll give you so much more. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Most High. He's the maker of heaven and earth, King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. You know, he's God. There's no other God like unto him. All we want you to do, folks, today is to consider Jesus. What we've come here before to do, to come here before you to do, what the world needs is Jesus, is to consider Jesus. Yes, you know, we've considered all kinds of things. We, we've got into self-help books, and, and we've watched these programs, and every time you see a program on TV, there's always some type of pill they want you to take. And uh -huh. Everybody's pill is better than everybody else's. And if you'll take this pill, it'll fix your arthritis, and it'll fix your liver, and it'll fix your kidneys. Yep. Well, folks, may I say to you, I know a man. Mm -hmm. he, his name is Jesus. Whoa. You see, he's involved with creation. He's involved with every aspect of our lives if we'll let him get in there. The only thing that Jesus wants to do is to love us, to heal us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to set us free. And may I say to you now, it's not up to him. You see, it's up to us. If you'll go back in Genesis and begin to read and study your Bible, you'll find out that God said after he created man, he said, let them have dominion. Now, we don't quite fully understand that scripture, I don't think, because nobody un fully understands the Bible just yet and never will. 
However, when he said, let them have dominion, you know what he said to me? That's like him looking at me going, Larry, you're in charge of your life. You're in charge of your destiny. You're in charge of what you want to do for a living. You're in charge if you want to wear a white shirt or a black shirt. You're in charge if you want to wear tennis shoes or boots. If you want to live in the country or the city. He said, if you want to eat tomatoes or you want to eat pears or whatever you want. He said, you're in charge. He said, let them have dominion. Now, I want to tell you something. We have a God. If you serve God and you're born again, you have Jesus you serve a need meeting God. God will meet you right at the point of whatever it is you need, when you need it, and for how long you need it. Uh -huh. I've come to tell you today, I don't, I don't know what your concept of Jehovah is or what your concept of Jesus is, but let me tell you what the Bible says about him. The Bible plainly says when God's speaking to us and Jesus speaking to us and he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit in various other ways, you know what he said? He said, son, daughter, I love you. And I am not mad at you no matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you say. You see, it doesn't matter how you're living or how I'm living today. It doesn't matter what we're doing wrong. It doesn't matter how we think about things to do wrong, how we plan sin. God still loves us. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Yes, I'm a born-again Christian filled with the Spirit of the Most High God. He loves me just as, as, just as much as he loves a sinner. He, he's no difference. He loves us. You see, when the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He, for God so loved the world. That's everybody and everything in it. Amen. He gave his life for me. He gave his life for you. As far as God's concerned and Jesus is concerned, it's a done deal. Yep. Only thing we've got to do is say, Jesus, I believe it. I believe you was born of a virgin. I believe you went to a borrowed tomb. I believe the power of the Most High God, Jehovah, raised you from the dead. And then what you do is you say, Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Now, when you do that, you got reborn. You got born again. Now what's going to happen is you'll have a direct line with God. And see, there'll be that spirit inside of you that wants to do right. The sin that you committed on Monday, you won't want to do it on Tuesday because you got born again. There'll be something inside you that says, hey, that's wrong. Yep, that's good, Larry. It'll direct you. It will guide you and it will lead you. And then once you begin, when you do that, you get into the word and you find a church. You say, Lord, where do I go to church? And then you start going to various churches. When you get inside that church and they're having praise and worship and the preacher's doing their thing, it will register with you. You'll, you'll get that peace and you'll say, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. If you don't get that peace, you're not offended. Don't let anybody be offended. You just say, look, this is not for me. To go to the next church. And you keep going. And when you find that church, you'll sit in and you'll go, I belong here. Right. You'll just know it's inside of you. Yep. I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about where you can get fed. Yep. I'm talking about a place where there's a man or a woman up in the pulpit. Trust me, it's okay for a woman to preach the gospel. Yes, sir. Amen. It's perfectly all right. But you'll have that inner peace inside of you, and you'll just sit there and you'll go, boy, I like this place. I, I just don't want to leave. <laughs> Church will be over, and you'll just want to hang out and fellowship uh -huh. with folks for a little bit. I want to talk to you today about that need meeting God. Now, I'm going to read some scripture today, which I always read scripture, but I'm going to read a lot of scripture today. I mean, whole uh, chapters. The reason I'm doing this is I want to get the whole account over to you so you get a full understanding of what's going on. I'd like for you to write these scriptures down. Now, they'll be posted on your screen there, but you write them down, and you go back and read these accounts, and you see what God did with his people, how he met their need, saved their life, protected and provided for them. Let me tell you something. I don't like to say Old and New Testament, see, because I don't serve an old God. All right. I believe in testament number one and testament number two. Now, you can say old and new. I'm not, that's just my personal thing because I don't have an old God. I have a God that's current, on time, every time. 
Go with me to Exodus chapter 14. I think you'll find this account pretty familiar. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before, before Paharoth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal-Zaphon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's... Have you ever thought like that? You've been entangled, been shut in, don't know what to do, where to go? You follow God. Listen to this. Amen. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Verse 5. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have you done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. He took 600 chosen chariots. Now, he took 600 of the best chariots and the best men that he had. And you have to remember something now. At that time, Egypt had the top fighting army in the entire world. They were the best army ever trained, ever seasoned, battle-ready men. They were well-trained. And he took 600 of the best men he had. And all chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Paharoth before Baal-Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel, well, I love this, they cried out unto the Lord. You see, when they got in dire straits, they thought they'd seen their last sunrise. They thought they'd ate their last meal. They thought it was over with. Who did they call on? Yes. They called on the Lord God most high. I come to tell you today, it doesn't matter. You're still alive on this earth and you're breathing. You call upon the name of the Lord and you believe God. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You believe God. Believe Jesus. Believe this word. This is very important stuff. Listen to this. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us to, away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better us for to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, and stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which will, he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Folks, I'm telling you what now. Did you hear? See, they have a choice right now. Those Israelites have a choice. They could stand there and stand in fear, trembling, looking at the problem, looking at the situation, looking at a mighty, mighty army wanting to come in and annihilate every one of them. Or they could do what the man of God said to do. I don't know about you, but when I get in rough situations, I choose to do what God said to do. Yes. Now, let me tell you something. It's not always that easy. I have to calm myself down. You understand? I have to calm myself down. I have to stop what I'm doing, and I have to begin to think about what's going on. I have to look at the circumstance of the situation. What I have to do is I have to see what's going on in my life, and then I have to see what God says about what's going on in my life. And then right there at that decision, right at that crossroads, I've got to make a decision which one I'm going to believe in. I'm going to believe God. And if I were you, I would begin to believe God. I would start finding out more about Jesus. I would pursue him as though my life depended on it because it does. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today. He said, you'll see them again no more forever, ever. You'll never see them people that want to do you harm anymore. 
The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your and ye shall hold your peace. What did I just say? Folks, it's time for us to stand still. Look, weigh your options. This is what's happening in my life, and this is what God said it's happening in my life. The world says they're going to do this to me. God said that he's going to do this for me. Listen, it's crossroads time. There's that fork in the road right now. You have a perfect opportunity as I'm speaking to you right now to say, Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Can't live this way anymore, about to die. Everything I have is about to be gone. I begin to live for the Lord today. Why don't you begin to live for Jesus today? All you got to do is say, Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. All he wants to do is help you, save you, heal you, and deliver you and set you free. Will it be a smooth road? No, it's not going to be a smooth road. There's nothing smooth about faith. Let me just tell you that. It takes a person who with strength and conviction to have faith. Because we've got to have faith in God that we believe God will do what he said he'll do, but he's not going to always do it in the time frame that we think he should do it in. And the Lord said unto Moses, where, now I love this part right here. This is We've got to stop. Let me read this scripture and then we're going to stop a second. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now God said to Moses, the people cried out and, and murmured to Moses. Moses turned around and told God. God said, why are you whining and crying to me? Did I not give you dominion? Did I not give you the opportunity? Did I not put power and dominion over you and in you and over this land? What he's trying to tell and get across to Moses is, Moses, about to tell you what to do. When I tell you what to do, you do it. Folks, listen. It's just, now, it can be that easy, but what we do is we don't see. So if we don't see and we don't feel, we don't smell, our, our physical senses are not active, we're unsure. I don't believe your faith is going to cause your physical senses to react. You see, because if you did, you know what would happen? You'd begin to rely on your physical senses. Every time your faith rose up and you got a tingling or that hair on the back of your neck stood up, you go, well, that's God. i got to act. That's not how faith works. Faith says, Lord, you said it. I believe it. That settles it. I read the word. I found out what was going on in my life. God gave me scripture to overcome what's going on in my life, and I'm standing on it come hell or high water. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stand with God. And that's how that's going to be. That's what God's telling Moses. He said, what are you whining to me for? I've already told you. Have I not done all these wonderful and marvelous things for you already? Now, you watch this. Now, he's about, God's about to tell Moses what to do. I'm telling you, we've got a need meeting God. And if anybody ever had a need, it's the Israelite children at this moment in their life. God speaking, now he's talking to Moses. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea on dry ground. Now this God told this man what I'm about to do. After you do something, when you do what I tell you, then I'll act. He said, lift up your hand. He said, when that happens, I'm going to split the Red Sea from one side to the other. And not only am I going to split it and cause, and cause the waters to draw back, you're going to walk across dry ground. And I, me, personally, it doesn't say this, I don't think, but you know what I think happened? After he walked across, when they began to walk across on dry ground, I think that dry ground was really, really smooth. I think they didn't have any problem going across. It was just a nice little leisurely walk right across the river or across the sea. And I, behold, this is God still talking, and I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots, upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and all his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went before went from before their face and stood behind them and it came, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel 
And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to thee, so that the one came not near the other all night. Now Moses had heard from God. He's about to do exactly what God told. See, listen, if God speaks to you and when he speaks to you and he tells you to do something, if you don't do it, God cannot act. He said, listen, I need for you to do this and then I'll step in. Bible says, if you'll draw near to me, I'll draw nigh to you. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord, once Moses reacted, then the Lord reacted. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. Now here, this is crucial. All that night. See, it's not like in the movies. When, when uh, Charlton Heston, you know, in the movie, he raised his hands up with the staff, and then all of a sudden the water just opened up and parted, obviously for TV time. But God said that he caused it. Listen, let me read it again so I don't get it wrong. Moses stretched, this is verse 21, chapter 14 of Exodus. You read it for yourself. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. Let me tell you. When he made the sea to, to draw back, they walked across dry land and it says it took all night. So it took at least 8 or 10 hours, at the most 12 hours. Most of the time in our lives, when we ask God to move, God's not going to move just like that. Amen. Because I've got to tell you, faith is just not like that. That's not how faith is. That's not how faith works. Although God has moved that way in, in my personal life, he's only moved that way just a couple times. You see, when, if you ask God for something and he does it just like that, there's no faith in that. Faith is you believe God. You go to God with a problem and you found it in the word and you put the word into action. Now what we've got to do is begin to praise and worship and thank God as though it's already done. Go read the book of Mark, the 11th chapter. Just read the whole chapter. Help you and do you good too. Verse 22. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued after them now, and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. See, we get a call, we do what God, we have a need, we ask God to do it, he begins to fulfill it, then we see the enemy coming in. Don't turn around and look behind you. You keep doing what God calls you to do. You keep saying what the Word says to do. The enemy may be this close right here in your ear. He may be saying all kind of manner of things to you in your ear. You don't listen to what the enemy has to say. You only focus and pay attention to what God has to say. Let me ask you something. When the Israelites were crossing over on dry ground, and the Bible says the Egyptians began to pursue them, what would have happened if Israelites just froze in their tracks and panicked? Never would have made it. I believe God would have wiped them all out except for a small remnant. But they didn't do that. God told Moses. Moses told the people. The people believed Moses because Moses believed God. And they kept going. Amen. Folks, don't, once, God, once, God, once God gets you to move, don't you stop until he says stop. That's right. You stand your ground in this word. You stand in faith in God. You, but above anything else, you believe God. You believe this word, and you come hell or high water, you stand on this word. Yes. Now, you listen. The reason I'm telling you that, we're about to find out. Exodus 14, chapter 14, verse 24. came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire. See, it says he, now listen, catch this. This is, you listen to this. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. You know what that just, I just saw that. Thank you, Lord. Do you understand what he's saying? It says God looked at the Egyptians through the fire. Do you feel like you're in fire right now? Let me tell you who's in that fire with you. you go, I'm not going to tell you where it is. You go look for yourself. You go over and read Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They was in the fire. I'm not going to try to get off subject. God was in the fire with them. He's in the fire with the Egyptians. He's in the fire with the Israelites right there in the midst, walking across dry land. 
Don't you think for one second our God's ever abandoned you? Right. Amen. He's not an abandoning God. If anything else, he'll draw so close to you, uh, you won't even know he's there. But let me tell you something also in the word. Jesus, out of his own mouth, remember I told you about them red letters? You ought to pay attention to them red letters. He said, Lo, I'm with you, never leave you, never forsake you. He said, I'm with you even till the end of the yeah. earth, yeah. until the end of the That's world. Right he said, I am with you. Yes. Now, what kind of friends, how many friends do we think we have today? We, oh, I've got all kinds of friends. Well, you get in trouble and start calling on those friends okay. and see how many of them come show up. Call your friends and go, hey, I'm a little short on my utility bill. Can you help me? And they'll go, who are you? Uh -huh. Martha, it's the wrong number. And they'll hang up. Right. But if they get in trouble and their lawnmower breaks, they're going to call you and go, hey, can you come cut my grass? And won't offer a dime and won't offer to help and pay for any gas or any oil. You just come do it because you're my friend. Uh -huh. Folks, ain't no friend like Jesus. There's no friend like the Most High God. There's no father like him. There's no friend. There's no Savior out there. There's no human being out there or no other God out there that'll do you like Jesus. Right. You read some of these accounts in this, in this New Testament, this First Testament, the second one. Look and see what God did. You know why he did that? Because he loved them. They called on, Moses called on God and God reacted. If I'm telling you, if you'll call on God this very moment, he will react. And he'll react in a positive way. He'll react in a way that's for your benefit. Only thing he come to do is to build you up, lift you up, steer you up, cheer you up, and cause you to have a home in heaven. That's, right. that's all he wants for us, folks. That's good, yes. And troubled the host of the Egyptians and took... Now, <laughs> And took off their chariot wheels. that They drave them heavily. Now remember, finest army in the land. All their equipment's kept up. They have master builders that know how to build chariots and make wheels and make axles and all that kind of stuff. And yet they're full gallop wide open after the Israelites. And what happens? That tire starts giving. A little shimmy comes on. You ever been driving down the road and you go, Boy, once I get at 40, 45, that thing starts shaking a little bit. <laughs> hey, they got at 40, 45, and wheels started shaking a little bit, and guess right. what? Now, that was probably, an probably blew their minds. I just had this thing in the shop. It just got tuned up front end of line. They just greased all the axles. Everything, was, that mechanic told me everything was fine, and here we go. In the moment that I need it the most, boom. Don't you ever discount God. Let me tell you something, folks. I don't care what anybody says. My God does what he wants when he gets ready and as long as he wants to do it. Because right. ain't nobody out there tell him otherwise. And when he does it, he does it for my good and my good only. Sometimes we may not think it's good and we may not think it's for our good, but I can assure you whatever God does for you and lays out for you, it is good. Only thing we've got to do is accept it and go forward. And in days ahead, you know what? You'll look and you'll look back and you'll go, Thank you, Lord. That was for my good. Yeah. I didn't see it in January, but long about August, I saw it. Yeah. I didn't see it in 2018, but long about 2020, I saw it. Yeah. What we've got to do is have faith and have our patience in God and rest in the Lord. Yes, sir. The only battle we're ever called to fight is a good fight of faith. Right. And trust me, that's enough battle. Right. Moses stretched forth it. Now, let me see here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. Again, when Moses acted, God didn't react until the morning appeared. So what that scripture tells me is Moses did that maybe break of dawn, a couple hours, a little twilight kind of action. And when the sun came up, when morning came, then God acted. There's that faith. There's that little group of faith right there. And the waters returned, covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. Listen at this. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. I'm telling you, did God not just tell them? He said, the Egyptians that you see today, from this after this day, you'll see them no more forever. 
He just fulfilled that scripture. Yep. Yet at that time, they're walking along, and there's a fish right here. I don't know how deep they were. I don't know how deep the place was. I don't know how much water. He, it doesn't matter. Right. It don't matter to me if it's six inches or 60 foot. What matters is God did what God said God would do, and he did it for them. I've come to tell you today that God will do for you what he said he would do for you, and he'll do it for you in his timing, not mine and not yours. What we must do is stand our ground and say, no, no, I've heard God, and God said this, and so shall it be. Because then your closest friends and your closest family members are going to begin to say this and thus and so on. And you, no, what your response should be, no, I've got God's word on it. And then let that be it. Let the word of God be your finality. Yes. Because I'm going to tell you, one day we're all going to stand before the most high God. All going to stand before Jesus. And the only thing we'll have from, to, in front of him is what faith we had in the word. God's going to look down and say, did you believe my son? Yes, sir, I did. And he's going to look and go, sure did. I see his blood all over you. Come on in, son. Amen. That's how that's going to go down. Listen to this. I ain't done. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the shore. He said, you will see them no more forever after this day. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Let me go ahead and tell you, when most of the time, not always, but most of the time, when you see the word fear or feared in the Bible, it means it translates into worship. It translates into worship. There's a reverent fear for the Lord we should have. Yes, we should fear him because he's the most high God. But he does not want us to fear him like we walk into a dark room. Y'all know that kind of haunted house type of feeling. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. He doesn't want us that kind of fear. No, he, he wants a reverent fear that we love him because he first loved us. Yes. Now, folks, I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. But what I want to do is we're going to continue this on. We're, I want to do this in about three parts. Amen. Forgive me for not telling you at the beginning, but there's more word here than we realize. And I've got several more scriptures. They're probably going to put it on there. If they do, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine. But I want you to tune in next week because I've got to tell you, in today's time and the struggle that everybody's going through today, I've come to tell you there is a God and there is a Savior yeah. and there is a Holy Spirit and they are for you yeah. and they are yeah. not against you. And the only thing that they want to do is to help you. Amen. Yes. There's no other God out there. There's no other self-help book. No, there's there's not. nothing else out there that will help you like Jesus will help you. I've come to tell you in probably at least a three-part series here, you've got to understand there is a God that's on your side. Yeah. There is a, But what we've got to do in order for him to be on our side is we've got to do this. Jesus, come into my life yes. and be my Lord and Savior. And I'll worship you forever. Now, let me tell you something. You heard, I'm going to say this just about every broadcast. If you're not born again, you don't believe there's a God, you don't believe there's a devil, you don't believe there's a heaven, you don't believe there's a hell, you certainly don't believe there's a Jesus. You've heard him, but you just don't believe in him. Let me do this for me. Jesus, I don't believe you. But if you're real, show yourself unto me. Jesus, if you're, that's right, Jesus, if you are real, show yourself, reveal yourself Amen. unto me. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you like I've told you before, I hope you're sitting down when that happens. Because he, let me tell you what happened. There's a circumstance or a situation to show up in your life that you think there's no possible way out of it. Let me tell you who's about to show up. <laughs> His name's Jesus. Yes, He's the Christ. And he'll show up and he'll fix it and he'll go, now do you believe? You know, like that TV commercial, Can You Hear Me Now? Uh -huh. I can almost see Jesus going, do you believe in me now? That's right. I pulled you out of the fire, out of the Ooh, miry clay yeah. that nobody else could pull you out of. There's not one, the President of the United States couldn't pull you out of it, but I'm a little bigger than he is. That's right. Amen. 
and I can pull you out of it. You call upon Jesus. You find out for yourself. You make up your mind today whether Jesus Christ is real or not. And when you make up your mind that he is real, you follow him and watch what mighty things he'll do in your life. Folks, call us. If you need any prayer, send us prayer requests. We'd love to hear from you. We serve such an awesome God. Folks, I thank you. Looking for answers And you need a way out You've been trapped in that trial Full of sorrow and doubt You saw a trickle of sunlight But you found no escape just hold on to his promise He said that he'd make a way Yes And he'll make a way In the middle of nowhere When it seems no one really cares Oh, he's there Right. 